You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Radio Public, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 15th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from Kiev, this is Rudy Giuliani Podcast. Everybody clap! Take two. Recorded live from the HR department of the George Soros International Bolshevik Liberal Banking Conspiracy, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. That's the George Soros Jewish International yes. Bolshevik Liberal Banking yes. Conspiracy. Yes. Like the like the new moon. You know things are getting weird, and you know things are cycling back through where they've always been when George Soros gets rolled out as, or his son, or his grandson gets rolled out as the whistleblower, the secret conspirator, somebody else. He's their Emmanuel Goldstein. He, yeah, he, absolutely. He's the, the symbol of hate that the that the party, the 1984 Ingsoc party, requires to hold itself together. So, and and if not him, then Hillary. Sure. Uh, there was discussion this week on uh, Fox and Friends about the front runners in the Democratic Party in Iowa mm -hmm. and how, you know, front runners come and go and everybody bumps up two points and bumps down and then they get attacked because they're on the top of the latest poll and so forth. Mm -hmm. And one of the two men on the couch said, yeah, no matter who the front runner is, they have a target on their back. And Ainsley Earhart just immediately jumped in and said, that's why Hillary should run again. Yeah. And if I knew who Ainsley Earhart was, I'd be a lot more. She's the blonde on Fox and Friends. It's my I job know. to I, know I, I that. I want everyone and to know. To spell it. <laughs> for, for the good of the team, for the good of the nation, every day my wife puts on the hazmat suit and wanders up to her chin <laughs> in Fox News swill. Um, for you people, for you people. <laughs> and, and I'm not anywhere near as, I mean, I know Ainsley Earhart because she's Fox and Friends and everybody who has to write anything about Trump has to know everything about Fox and Friends. But um, Heather over at Crooks and Liars is a an expert on Fox she, News Blondes and who it is and who's this one and who's this one. And I just, all I have to do is send her a picture and say, who, what name is this person? Because they are so alike. You know, they're all, their hair's all bleached out of the same bottle. Well, it's, so it's Roger Ailes' template. He had it, he had a template that he wanted women to look like this on the, that's the purpose of getting viewers to the show is having hot blondes on have, with short skirts. That's why we have class and, tabletops so that we can see up right. their legs. We can see up their skirts. That's right. the whole point. Yeah, it's a whole thing. There's the leg chair. You know, that's where Don Jr.'s, girlfriend used to work was in the leg chair mm -hmm. at fi the five so uh yeah that, it's a thing so uh but yeah that's one of my jobs over at crooks and liars is to write about fox and friends every once I'm in a so while sorry. and then and then uh <laughs> tom fitton of uh judicial uh, watch yes. he of the uh bulking muscles through the thin shirt uh actually tweeted out this week you know we can still impeach obama sure <laughs> He's still coming for your guns, people. He's still yeah. coming for your guns. Any minute now, he's coming right through your door for your guns. So uh, these these edge people, so whether it's Tom Fitton or Joe DeGeneva or Fox and Friends, whoever it is, they all have to come up with some going back to these same old violins of oh, yeah. here's the here's the real enemy. Yeah. And it's a huge distraction. And I, I'm I don't know. I, we're jumping right in, but. Go. One thing that's really frustrated me this week is the media narrative of, oh, we have two different sets of facts. Yeah. And that, that. it's a, yeah. such a problem in America that we can't communicate because uh, the two parties have two different sets of facts. It's like, no, the Republican Party is lying. It, there is. I'm, I'm writing up a, a massive essay on Chuck Todd. I'm not really. I'm just doing three things he did in the last week that just, mm -hmm. you know, that – that spinal transplant that everyone was so excited about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it didn't yeah. take. Uh, the body immediately projected <laughs> the new spine. And it's back to being exactly who we know he is. And it is 
clear to me as an outside observer with no media contacts that somebody had a little talk with Chuck Todd. They had that yeah. sort of arm around your shoulder. Yeah. You know what happened? Remember what happened to David Gregory? He was driving down the road one day, not a care in the world. And suddenly I called him. And then now he's out promoting a book on his faith journey and he's got a podcast. So uh, I'd hate to see the same thing happen to you, Chuck. So how about you just stick to the fucking script and your job is to sit there and as as Rand Paul lies to you, and as as Hugh Hewitt just blabs bullshit in every direction, and grin and nod and pretend that this just another it's just another opinion. Who knows who's telling the truth? Who knows who's lying? And this week, um, Jim Hind, I believe it was, uh, Representative Jim Hind was on the uh, was on the Sunday shows uh, with Chuck Todd, and actually did what we all dream of doing. He actually called out Chuck Todd to his face. And, and as Chuck Todd tried to both sides, uh, Trump and Biden, um, called him out. And you know what happened? Absolutely nothing. Chuck Todd just sort of shook it off, let his software reboot, and grinned like an idiot, pretend it never happened, and just moved on. Because that's his job. Just keep on bullshitting the people of the United States keep on lying about both sides. And when the tide does get higher and higher, because this is in a weird way, like climate change. Yeah. It's not deniable anymore, except by the most depraved idiots inside of one party. And so the, the bullshit is just going to get higher and higher and crazier and more on fire and more uh, irrefutable. And Chuck Todd has sold himself to the Comcast corporation uh, on the predicate that I will sit in this chair and I will do your bidding. And your bidding is never blame Republicans for anything. Always make sure, no matter what they do, blame both sides. And the thing that you and I talked about before this, before we started recording this evening, is mm -hmm. how long you and I, both in writing and mentally before we were bloggers and while we, this podcast that's going on 10 years now, how how consistent that thread has been in everything we've written and said over really? the last really? over the last 15 years, which is yep. the problem with the media is the both sides lie. The, mm -hmm. the gargantuan enabling both sides lie. And it's so clear that people like Chuck Todd are hired to tell that lie. And so the question then becomes after you just you sort of acknowledge the fact that Chuck Todd cannot change. He is he's a weak, pathetic, cowardly man. Who, who history is uh, in my, in the post I'm working on. He's the guy in left field who doesn't want the ball hit to him. <laughs> just yeah, please for God's yeah. sakes, just let me stand out here and enjoy the uniform and get laid. Cause I'm a part of the team and don't anyone ever do any, ask me to do anything hard. Cause I can't do it. And the ball's coming right for his head and he's ducking as fast as he can. He is not up to the job that history has thrust him into, which is sitting in a big chair at a big network during the worst crisis in our democracy's history. He is incapable of being a journalist. He is simply not wired that way. So when you and I talk, it's think about how long we've been saying that this is, this is the problem. This enabling lies what has made the Republican Party this bad. This enabling lies why re the left has exactly the same opinion of the media as the right does. We think we use the same terms among ourselves that Donald Trump uses, not the enemy of the people, but fake news for exactly the opposite reason, because there's no lie so big that Chuck Todd and all of his imitators and David Brooks and all of his imitators and Brett Stevens and all their imitators won't just deflect and deny and lie about or just ignore because the handful of wealthy men who run those corporations hire people to tell that particular lie in that particular way. So the media itself is completely broken, and we don't have another mechanism available to tell the truth to the American public um, on a mass scale. And that's what's fucked us up. So you have instead a couple of liberal podcasters in a cornfield <laughs> saying, you know what? If you just go back through every one of our podcasts, please don't do that. There's 520 of them now, and it would take you some time. Trust us when we say, the, the first posts I was writing back when I was a blogger was about both sides do it being bullshit. It was Tom Friedman. It was David Brooks. And it was a lot of people I still write about. None of those people have ever been fired. None of them have been demoted. None of them have had suffered any career setbacks at all. Um, 
the lie continues and someone has to be behind it. There has to be some reason why the corporate media is so willing to burn our country down to keep this lie intact. And that's what I want to, um, we're going to get right into the impeachment hearings. Yep. Uh, and I, I want to really, uh, applaud George Kent for saying the quote of the week, (laughs) which is you can't promote principled anti-corruption action without pissing off corrupt people. Yeah. (laughs) And I, yeah. Rachel Maddow put that on an embroidered doily uh, in her background on <laughs> Thursday night. So, uh, you know, we're going to all cross stitch that. You can't promote principled anti corruption action without mm-hmm. pissing off corrupt people. That was said mm-hmm. on the record under oath uh, at a con- at the congressional hearing by George Kent. Yeah. Um, and I want you to talk for a minute about. Um, not only the the dueling chirons and graphics that went on, oh, but yeah. the difference between I mean, and everybody can go and look at that. That you know, Fox News had one set of biographical Lies. information, which Lies. is all based on Donald Trump's tweets. Right? right. Here's right. what Trump thinks about this person: he's a liar, mm-hmm. lying liar. Right? He's a never Trumper. It's triple he's a, hearsay. And a never Trumper, which is twice right. as bad as double hearsay. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so they just sort of compiled Donald Trump's opinions and put them up on the screen Mm -hmm. the difference between lying on hannity right and lying under oath yeah it seems to me that people like sondland and people (laughs) like Corey lewandowski and so forth are getting caught up in this sense of Oh no, my what everything I believe and that crazy uncle Liberty believes and that we've been saying for 30 years, it's really in the blood now. Right. It's really in the brain fluid of right. these folks. Mm-hmm. So that when they go under oath, they're just going to repeat that and think it's okay. Yeah. And yet you're under oath. And and that is seems to be the one place where truth is actually having some consequences well well let's let's de- lying is having some consequences let's you and i deconstruct that that term under oath yeah yeah um donald trump trump took an oath does he care at all about it <laughs> he's under oath 24 7 365 yeah. as uh, president right. every single member of the republican party in in congress took an oath do they so care about the their constitution oath? They no they don't give a shit about their oath they don't care at all about their oath um the people that donald trump hires to put in front of the cameras and to put out to speak for him clearly just lie constantly and have no, mm-hmm. not only uh, have no compunction about it, have no fear of any consequences. Cause, cause we, they have been taught. This is something that this is how the enabling lie of both sides do it has killed us as a country. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm mm-hmm. of the mindset now that the, the country I grew up in is, is not, uh, is not coming back. It's not mm-hmm. reparable. We're going to build a new country and it's going to be awesome. It's going to look a lot like the old country, but this, Right now, this is when the dream dies. This is when mm-hmm. we, we look at ourselves and realize, holy shit, this country elected a fascist and a third of this country is delighted with it. And it doesn't matter how many times we hit them in the fucking face with facts. They're going to go right on grunting and moaning and being thrilled that this country is finally going to be a white supremacist super state for at least the, the duration of the next year. That's what okay, I have, an, I have never asked you this question, either on the podcast or off of yes. it. Why did Donald Trump win in 2016? Oh, so many reasons. <laughs> there really are. Yeah. It's like it, 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 in a close ball game. I have been back a million years when I played very little league, like Grapefruit League or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I remember uh, striking out ninth inning and everyone was mad at me you know, because we were down by one run or something. And my coach uh, was, for a moment, behaved like a civilized person and reminded us that we lost because everyone on the team made a mistake. You could have mm-hmm. done better. You could, did This one run was not why we lost. We lost because yeah. we didn't get another run last inning and because you dropped the ball and because on and on and on. This was a team effort. The, the reason Trump won was a whole bunch of reasons. It was mm-hmm. Matthew Dowd. It was Matthew Dowd and Ron Fournier and a people like that who just assumed Hillary Clinton was going to win and that it would be okay to shit all over her because what did it matter? This is, this is a joke. Joe Scarborough, Joe Scarborough too. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. It was all of them. It was the whole media decided that since Hillary was going to win anyway, there was no reason why we couldn't just 
beat, I've had used this before, beat on her like, like a pinata full of career mm-hmm. advancement candy because she was going to win. And then we can go back to hating her and, and her and uh, 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 Mitch McConnell arguing all the time. And it'll be just, it, this'll be, this is the game we understand. It's Democrats mm-hmm. trying to get anything done. Republicans shitting all over it, blocking them, sabotaging them, and laughing about it. And us sitting up here making millions of dollars, shrugging our shoulders, going, who knows who's right? You know, both sides. If only yeah. everyone were more civilized. If only Democrats were more civilized. If the, it's the tone of everyone. That's the game that all of these clowns learned how to play. And they just kept playing it. And we were sitting there going, iceberg iceberg ahead there's a real big iceberg and you really need to change the course of the ship just a little bit you need to stop allowing people to lie on facebook you need to take russian interference seriously you need to understand that telling a bunch of people that it doesn't matter who they vote for because of a corrupt duopoly and that was matthew dowd and that was ron fournier Mm -hmm. um and that was glenn greenwald for that matter really does matter in in marginal places where things could make a difference and the reason Donald Trump won the Republican prime, that's, that's, that's the general election. And Hillary Clinton could have done better. There's a whole bunch of things that could have gone a different way. The reason Donald mm-hmm. Trump won the primary is because the Republican Party is a racist, fascist party. And he played their songs louder and more, right. and more robustly and with more passion than the rest of the clowns standing around did. They all said... Well, and he, he sat in front of Fox News and repeated what... Everyone that was watching Fox News heard all right. day. And so he's saying what I'm thinking was him repeating the brainwashing message that Fox News was right. giving him. And he was the Fox News candidate. And, and the more he rushed to be the Fox News candidate and just say things that were like, you know, Mexicans are rapists and murderers. Mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. the People didn't distance him, them themselves from that in the Republican Party. They They tried to play catch up. Well, of course it's bad. You know, they, they wouldn't, no one would take him aside. They, they couldn't muster the collective effort to isolate him as a freak and drive him out of the party or cut him a check for a billion dollars and make him go away. They, they, everyone thought that everyone misread the Republican Party except for liberals, honestly. The only people who ever right. understood the Republican Party have been Rush Limbaugh and liberals. And we knew, we've known for decades that they have been primed for this. They have been trained to want this. And the person, the con men who came along and said it loudest and longest and told them that your paranoia is patriotism and the voices in your head are true was going to win the fucking party vote. And we saw them falling like 10 pins, but it still didn't matter because the mainstream media, the Beltway media and the Republican um, establishment uh, the, the David Brooks's and the David Frums and the rest of them who are saying, don't worry, the, the, it's going to be Rubio. Don't worry. Rubio is going to save us. Mm-hmm. Those, people have, yeah. those people have never, those people live on an island where climate change is never going to happen. So I don't really give mm-hmm. a shit what happens to the rest of us. It's a game to them. And, and until the monster came to their door and kicked the door down and said, I am here. I have arrived the horrible thing liberals told you was going to happen if you let this go on has arrived. They didn't take it seriously because it didn't affect them. It didn't mm-hmm. affect their stocks, their portfolio, their homes, their property values, their mistresses. It didn't affect them in any way. They don't give a shit about us. They're Russian royalty living on a different planet than we do. And suddenly everything fell apart on them. And they needed to figure out a way to explain why it wasn't their fault. <laughs> Not why it was, was bad or wasn't bad, but why none of this was their fault. And that's when they scrambled right to the safest lifeboat of all. Both sides do it. Everyone does it. We all failed. Everyone failed. It's everyone's fault. It's certainly not our fault. And here we are. So that is my belief. What about you? What do you think Donald Trump won? How do you, why do you think Donald Trump won in 2016? White man. Yeah. Okay. That's a that's a very short way of saying what I just said. So thank you for being better at this than me. It it is white men in the Rust Belt mm-hmm. who have a lot of reasons to be disgruntled. Yeah. And they had six or seven reasons to vote for Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. Yep. One, Hillary's going to win. Like you said, Hillary's going to win. If I vote for Trump, then it's anything Hillary does is not my fault. That's right. I don't like women. I don't like the way she is better than I am. 
Uh, she knows more than I do. She's gonna. She's a professional woman. I hate that. She's a scary Negro. She's my supervisor. She's my supervisor. I hate that. Uh, and so I will vote for Trump and uh, be be a guy with a big dick. And even though she'll win and she'll make sure that I don't get hurt by the government, you know that my stuff isn't taken right. away. I won't. No, nothing she does will be my fault. I think there were easily. Uh, 15,000 white men who voted for Trump is a joke because what difference does it make? Misogyny, talked about that. Herd immunity, right. white male false right. confidence. <laughs> you know, I, it's not going to hurt me no matter who wins. It's not going to hurt me. That's that's what, that's what the thing that we, we've talked about once or twice before, which is that the Matthew yeah. Dowd, Matthew Dowd is the chief political analyst for ABC News, by the way, in case you don't know. He, uh, I was, I, I needled him, I bugged him, I, I, I called him out, which didn't accomplish anything, for his pathological both siderisms during the 2016 election. He called me stupid. He called my readers stupid by name, and then blocked me. And two years later, he is evangelizing loudly, uh, exactly the opposite that he of the things he was saying two years ago. I'm glad he came around, but mm -hmm. this refusal to acknowledge that he ever held any other opinion is what drives me crazy. And, and but mm -hmm. the response from people who were inside the beltway, who who would act, who I could actually get a reaction from was shut up and go away. Shut up and go away. I don't want to talk mm -hmm. to you. I don't want to hear this bullshit. I, I have I have herd immunity. I know nothing's going to happen because someone else out there will behave responsibly. Somehow, magically, the great American democratic machine will resolve this and we'll all get through it and it'll be fine. This is, um, to get all science fiction university on you. This is the Selden crisis. Right. Where Harry Selden shows up and tells the crowd that the crisis they're facing is not the crisis they're facing. Like, holy shit, what, what do you mean? The mule? What's the mule? How come Harry Selden, he's been right all along. How come the program isn't working anymore? And, and after the mutant shows up and screws up all your plans, what do you do? Well, you don't know what to do because now the plan isn't working anymore. Now democracy isn't working anymore. And now the media looks around at the Republican Party as we see it. They don't talk about it, mind you. They won't call this by name. This is Chuck Todd's whole deal is never admit the Republican Party is exactly what liberals said it was. But they look around and see these feral animals where humans used to be. They see what I, what I call these bug-eating Renfields, these, these craven, filthy depraved monsters um, sitting in Congress, mm -hmm. voting for a traitor, supporting a lunatic. And, they, they're, and they're all like, how could we miss this to themselves? And the answer is, well, we told you. Mm -hmm. the, the worst mm -hmm. thing in the world for a, a Beltway media person or a Republican, the worst thing in the world, worse than having cigarette butts put out on your hand, <laughs> is admitting liberals are right. Mm -hmm. They just can't do it. They're not wired. And so they will, they will go through – any degree of avoidance, and they'll tell any lie to avoid saying that. And that's where we're at now. We're at a, a place where the Republican Party is telling one set of lies to get itself off the hook. And the, the media is telling another set of lies so that it, it won't be held responsible for the, the disaster that we're living through. And they're all trusting in Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi. The, the people they shit on every day. To somehow, right, to somehow pull democracy right, right. through. Just like... Just like at the end of the Bush yeah. administration, when it all fell apart, when the war yeah. was going badly and when liberals were right and the economy was collapsing and we had a trillion dollar deficit, which we were never supposed to have. And by the way, we torture people. And by the way, we lost a whole American city to a flood that we shouldn't have lost. After all of that happened, it was don't worry. Democrats will come, come along after, grab a mop and clean it all up. Just like Hillary. This was Obama's job. You get them up and clean up our mess while we humiliate you, while we embarrass you, while we go right on trying to sabotage you because your job is to clean up our shit. While we put on funny hats right. and wear a tea party and talk about Kenyan usurper and, and white slavery. white men part right. of it because yeah. Barack Obama's job was to be their servant, to, to obediently mm -hmm. clean mm -hmm. up their disaster while uncomplainingly. And never and, mentioning and never complaining right. about the fact that they called him every name in the book. They insulted his wife and they, they, they swore he wasn't even born here. They did exactly the same thing to Hillary Clinton. The Republican Party is a disease. It is a diseased part of our democracy. And it is way beyond curing. It was beyond curing 20 years ago. But now it's, we've gotten to the point where 
the disease is creeping inside the perimeter. <laughs> it's getting into the Chuck Todd universe, and they don't know how to cope with it because it, the minute they acknowledge that the Republican Party is the problem, the jig is up. Game's over. Well, but but Joe Scarborough knows how to deal with. He just says Trump's a Democrat. Trump's a Democrat, and by the way. I've been right all along. Right. When you control, this is important to know. When you control the cameras, you can you can say anything you want. When you control the cameras, there's no accountability. No one's going to come along and insist that you talk about the shit you said a month ago, which can contradict the shit you said now. The only time that ever happens is when someone like Representative Hines comes on television and says, "Hey, Chuck, both sides is bullshit, and you damn well know it, and and it's irresponsible." And how dare you. you let Rand Paul sit there and lie to you? Right. Yeah. And yeah. Chuck, Chuck is programmed. He's wired to do what he's wired to do, which is shrug, wait for his firmware. Go on to the boost, next question. Just right. ignore it because right. that is right. something we're not going to talk about. The most important issues of our times are the very issues that our media has sworn never to discuss. And that's what's killing us. That. And Nancy Pelosi and her uh, press conference today, we're recording this Thursday night. And I'm sorry that we're recording it Thursday night. Our schedule just. We want to get a show out this week, and this is when we can do it. Right. Uh, but um, – and so we will not be talking about uh, Marie Yovanovitch's no. testimony today. Well, we today, can speculate I, if you'd like. I we mean. can speculate. <laughs> it's going to be just like the well, other testimony. Look, look, can I just say one thing about that? Yeah. I bet we could figure out what Republicans will say about it a day in advance. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure we could. I don't want I'm, – I'm sure we can come up – we can get within 10 percentage points – of exactly mm -hmm. how they're going to respond to it because they they're they're that fucking predictable. But I the thing that I'm really interested in about her testimony is that in addition to all the other bullshit, this is an employment story. Mm -hmm. This is her losing her job and her career over these corrupt white men, right? And uh, that to me is going to speak to a whole lot of women <laughs> out there. Um. I, I, anyway, you were talking about Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi yeah. at her press conference said, you can't claim that testimony is only secondhand when you are preventing the people with firsthand knowledge from testifying. Mm -hmm. And you said, oh, Nancy, of course they yeah, can. I, I don't think you understand what can't means. Of course they can. Yeah. Of course they can. <laughs> yes, they can. And Donald Trump can complain about the fact that during the first day of hearings, uh, Democrats used a TV lawyer right. and in the same press conference say, you know, my call was perfect. I had it run over by lawyers. Brett Baer and Mark Levin right. looked at my, the transcript of my call and said it was a perfect right. call. My own sphincter has approved my poop. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's real profession. But that's the thing. It, it is, there's a real reflex. that I don't think um, old line Democrats like Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden are capable of getting over as much as I might admire them, as much as I might be glad Nancy Pelosi is doing what she's doing. There's, there's just this setting, this factory setting where they, they just seem to be incredulous that Republicans behave like Republicans. They just mm -hmm. are constantly surprised by shit that they should no longer be surprised by. And they constantly default to, you know, well, this is Joe Biden, really, um, and Deval Patrick, frankly, that, you know, once we're over this unpleasantness, um, somehow yeah. we're going to go back to our factory default settings, which is where we all work together and we all have drinks after work and we do shots. As I, as I said before, Grandpa... Biden wants to do shots with Reagan until bipartisanship. That's his plan. It's a shitty plan because that is not the Republican Party. And it terrifies me that not that Joe Biden can't see it because, you know, Joe Biden's had his day and he's he's in the sunset of his years. And that's that's fine. It's that no one on his staff will tell him that, uh, Joe, the, the Republican Party you're talking about, if 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 you squint real hard at old David Brooks columns, you can still sort of see the delusion and where it began. But that party does not exist quit pretending it does quit pretending that there's cake in the fridge when there's no cake in the fridge because come election day come come inauguration day you're gonna open that fridge and there's nothing there and then all of your plans fall apart because all of them depended on the republican party suddenly coming to jesus and that's never going to happen Don jr was on the view this week drift glass i heard because of his great big book <laughs> I love what you call this book. Can I read it? Oh, please, please. This is the title Drift Glass has for Donald Trump Jr.'s awful book. Mm -hmm. What Ann Coulter would say, but with less big words. Yes. <laughs> and it's being bought up by uh, 
it, the GOP book buying machine that right. does this all the time with conservative books, but also some some Russian interests are buying it too. I didn't it's know the number one New York Times bestseller. You should let people know it's the number oh one bestseller. God. Yeah, because, because of milk buying, as you milk, call it. Milk, milk buying <laughs> milk by buying. the New York Times and by, and by Russians. Yeah, Russians. And the RNC is giving away signed copies to people who donate at least $50 to the RNC. This is just another lump of prose that you you, you excrete. No one cracks it open. It is a talisman no. to prove right. that you are part of the club. Yeah. yeah. And we are not just part like of Mark the club. Just like Mark Levin's book. Yeah. <laughs> This is, this is what I'm worried about because um, I've gotten a lot of advice recently about shut up and write your book drift class, write five books. And I, I'm really worried that no one's going to buy it because nobody actually reads books anymore. They just sort of hold them up over the head and go, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, as, they do. It, yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, I, I looked up Neil Katyal's book on impeachment uh -huh. and Amazon recommends 15 other books on impeachment by people who have been on MSNBC. So this yeah. It is a thing to write right. a book because then you do have an entree. You have a book agent and you have people who will have you on television yes. and invite you to Politicon and so forth. So yes. that is the the ticket. Uh, yeah. If you want to do that, um, have a good time. <laughs> I yeah. don't want to travel that way. I'm not no. a traveler anymore. So We, we have uh, a microphone and we have um, our voices can literally go anywhere on planet Earth or above it. So yeah. And the, and I realize that limits our fame and fortune, but it's sort no, of no. It should extend it. The, <laughs> the 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 great big dream of blogging and the great big dream you of and, you uh, and I are not <laughs> interested podcast. in fame and fortune. No, I'm afraid. fortune, fortune. Speak for yourself. I'm interested in fortune greatly. Can um, I can I say something? This is really a huge mental break, but a month ago, and I've been waiting a month to share this. Wow. Um, Does it involve literally? Um. Okay. A podcast listener. It involves okay, a podcast sure. listener. Sure. And this is serious. And I'm sorry this is going to break the mood as well as the no. thing. But I've been thinking a lot about this person today because it, it's been a month. And I said I was going to wait a month to say anything. Uh, we heard from a podcast listener. I'm going to give any names, but they had sent us an Internet Kitty many moons ago. Right. And we put the Internet Kitty up. And this woman wrote me and said that her husband had passed away. Yes. And that it was somehow important to her to let us know yeah. that. Yeah. And I wrote back to her and I, I recognized her name. I mean, I recognized who she yeah. was and, and who her husband was and the kitty and all of that. And I was like, no, this is very mutual. It's it. I'm so glad that you let me know and that you felt like I was important enough part of your life to let me know. I would rather have mm -hmm. that in my life from one-tenth of the 7,000 people who listen to this podcast every week. You know, I'd rather have that kind of connection yeah. and that kind of support from one another. And I know, you know, you and I always have this little fight over, oh, no, I'm going to die first. No. <laughs> I'm going to die first. And we kind of, we neither one of us wants to be the one mm -hmm. left behind. But whichever one of us it is, we will not be alone. We will have 7,000 people behind us, thinking about us, caring about us, because we all are in this yeah. together yeah. and i'm sorry to sort of just snap to that from where we were talking but we're talking about fame and fortune my fortune is yeah. you guys that's and you mean so goddamn much to me that's we've been through so much together all have. of us and, and by the way and this is not an announcement of, of any fatal disease on either of my no part. no <laughs> uh, this is not a you know everybody has something right you know everybody has some sort of burden I have family members with cancer. You know, you guys know my dad is dealing with it. And now my sister's dealing with it again. And it's, it's, you know, we're going to go see everybody at Thanksgiving yeah. and give everybody a big hug. Yeah. But and on the West, um, on the West side of the country, my family, yeah. with stuff. So, you know, we're all yeah. And you guys have been so kind about Drift Glass's mom, you know, and we're helping her out as we can. And, uh, she's get, she's seeing lots of people, yep. uh, who are helping her and her giving her good care. So, uh, everybody's got something, but I'm just, I just wanted to take that time to say, well, we're talking about <laughs> Politicon. I mean, right. <laughs> Politicon is, n is never for no. me, I you know, being that person is not something I want, but I, 
cherish and never thought this would happen that I would have this kind of community surrounding me. And I'm so, so grateful. Well, and that's that's the key because it, it Politicon yeah. is a um, vendor's fair for politics. Yeah. And, and any place yeah. you, you go and there's like, I, we've never gone, but in my mind, it's one stall next to the next, next to the next. And one there's, hey, it's Ann Coulter. And the next stall is, hey, it's Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. And hey, look, it, and it's someone else. And it's just this sort of zoo full of <laughs> animals animals some of that whom don't... you would i would really love to meet someday sure, some of whom i would have... you know not in Coulter, but but no but it's a it's a petting zoo full of animals that should not be together right <laughs> at all they're, they're just diametrically opposed to each other anyway but there's this we'll put up a big tent and invite a bunch of people and put it in a show and we'll pay people to come and it'll be great and i understand it's a big deal and people's careers are made by it and if you want to do this for a living, you really there's a whole circuit you have to travel and you got to go. And I understand all well, that. Well, and really there, there, I think that the money situation for a lot of those folks is not as glamorous and piling up as you would right. think. Right. And Politicon pays, so right. I get it that you know you're going to get a paycheck out of it, and and your book isn't paying the rent you know i don't people's books don't pay the rent unless you're no. don jr you know yeah, well, yeah um so yeah i i don't have i don't begrudge anyone getting income from something like that but no. we're, this is a big huge uh tangent we're off on but and we're going to get to the news roundup which has more stuff on let's let's wrap it up this way yeah there is a difference between the community that we're a part of mm -hmm. and the industry of opinionating that we're not a part of. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And right. the community that we're a part of represents the values we are desperately trying to defend. And okay. more often than not, the opinion holding business is inimical to those values. Mm -hmm. Just rolls right over them. They, they there is a there's there's a reason why uh if you flip on MSNBC, uh you will see um people that you can't stand and mm -hmm. people that you respect uh, and guests who like Hugh Hewitt, who has no business being anywhere near a microphone right. and guests that you really enjoy because it's a business and they're like slot, 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 slot. This is not a community you're looking at. This is a company that is cranking out a product every hour on the hour and they're all very different and they all represent different things. That the the way that news is handled in that way is what's mm -hmm. wrong with our politics. Yeah. It's easily reducible to a commodity. And and it's fine for sports. If you want to handle sports that way, that's great. But these people oh, decide yeah. how much sure. poison is in our water and whether right. or not we're going to go to war and whether or not our children will have health insurance. And it's really important that that not be reduced to uh, a jar with red ants and black ants fighting in it and Chuck Todd shrugging his shoulders and going, who knows? And that's what that's what. And Chuck Todd being the person who will never miss a meal or. Right a copay or anything right. and have any skin in the game of surviving the way we have yeah. to. Yeah. We, I, well, I, sure. If we can just put a bow on this also with George Kent and ambassador Taylor's testimony yeah. yesterday yeah. of them insisting on being fact witnesses. Well. And I love that term. I mean, if I could adopt that <laughs> for ourselves, I would, we're fact witnesses yeah. rather yeah. than part of the opinion industry. And and yes, you and I have strong opinions. You do. <laughs> and part that's part of the liveliness of the show. Fact based opinions. But hopefully, and and you know, I I say this about Rachel Maddow all the time. People say, oh well, you know, Rachel, she's very opinionated and just spouts off her opinions on her shows. It's like, do you know what happens to Rachel Maddow if she gets a semicolon wrong on her show? Do you know how many people call her out on it goes, and let her know? Uh, yeah, you know much Twitter is on fire. If she gets the name of something wrong, or she had something on the other day about the music that opened the 1973 impeachment <laughs> hearings. Yeah, and yeah. she had, you know, 300 tweets in a period of five minutes of people telling her mm -hmm. what symphony it was and what March to the gallows segment yeah. of the segment, right. The, the, the movement, what the name of the movement was. So, you know, fact witnesses right. is what it's about well, and, and I, she can depend on her audience to keep her accountable whereas with hannity well you know 
Well, w- I had okay. a little sidebar today at the early, early morning meeting I went you to. Had, oh, yes. Your early, early morning volunteer meeting. Yes. Uh, and w- which we follow up by tomorrow with an early, early morning Another volunteer. one. Yep. Yep. Um, but I-, I was having a little sidebar with the guy who was sitting next to me. And we were both talking with admiration about civil servants. Yeah. And, yeah. and about, oh, my God, this guy who, um, you know, was fifth in his class in uh, West Point and chose to go in the infantry during the height of the Vietnam War. And, and yeah. his long – and just – these are the people that I ran into when I worked in government. Uh, these are the people who are my mom yeah. and my dad yeah. in a lot of ways, people who were teachers and principals. These are at, that's civil service. That is, those are people who decide they're going to serve their community and serve their country. And they and take a hit in salary when they, they could be doing, they're not you know, doing it for the right. money. They're, they're not, not doing, doing it for the money. money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Believe me, the way we were raised, they were not doing it for the money. No. No. But they did it because it needed to be done and they were good at it and they felt a calling to do it. And it that's the that's the deep poison that people like Ronald Reagan injected into this country that's mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. reaching the heart and the brain of our country and killing it off. It's this contempt for public service. Yeah. This contempt for well, public service doesn't add anything to the investment class, right? And that's why the parts of the government spending that are never threatened are those that help Wall Street. Well, you know, public we service is a threat to the investment class. Yeah, it's, right. It's, we need to tax people to to implement policies that's that are good for the country. We need to stop people from dumping mercury in the water. We need to stop people from doing terrible rolling back regulations that lets let poison into our food. And those things are the decisions of competent public servants, and those things are things that that libertarians and fake libertarians and wing nuts hate. That's what they hate. About, they hate the government telling them to do anything, and the government needs to tell you to do shit every now and then because bad people do bad shit, and someone needs to be around to stop them from doing it. And the market okay. won't solve that. <laughs> Just because we have five minutes to do the news round. Oh my god! Really. <laughs> Well, there's not that much news, so good for us, huh? (laughs) Go right ahead. All right. The U.S. uh, appeals court ruled that Trump's accounting firm must comply with the congressional subpoena for eight years of his tax returns. This is going to happen, and I'm really interested in whether he's going to resign over it. It'll be interesting to see. Lindsey Graham blocked a resolution in the Senate that would have formally recognized the Armenian genocide at the hands of the Ottoman Empire hours after meeting. He did this hours after meeting with Turkish President Erdogan. In the tenth circle of hell, Hitler was heard cheering. Yes. Yeah. What was Hitler's famous phrase about who remembers the Armenian genocide? Yeah, right. Well, Lindsey Graham's around to make sure that that just stays consistent. Trump suggested classifying all migrants who enter the U.S. without permission as quote enemy combatants and sending them to Guantanamo Bay. At a rally, did he? He must have done that at a rally. Probably, I think he suggested it to a book or a friend or something like that. But yeah, I don't have the the link, but I pulled it from a legitimate source, not just out of my fact based blue gal. This is fact based. Your your media at work uh, today, the New York Times went out of its way to write up Elizabeth Warren's plan and noting something that is definitely not Elizabeth Warren's plan. Fun fact, Elizabeth Warren's actual plan readily available in the plan section of her website. Uh, Jameson Foser of Media Matters predicts that the New York Times, quote, will not retract this clear falsehood because correcting mistakes is beneath it. (laughs) But the Times also will not mount an affirmative defense of this clear falsehood because responding to criticism from the left is beneath it Mm -hmm. and because no defense exists. Oh, and I predict that his prediction is going to be 100 percent on money. Uh, the first impeachment hearing consisted of Adam Schiff's opening statement, Devin Nunez's opening statement, George Kent's opening statement, followed by his testimony, and then Bill Taylor's opening statement, followed by his testimony. And it was a sight to see. This was a yeah. grand and beautiful historic moment in which the Republican Party utterly humiliated itself. And former Ukraine Ambassador Marie Yovanovitch is scheduled to testify tomorrow, Friday. So yeah. we will be watching. I'm sorry we won't be podcasting. Now, the... Um, some new information, which you probably have already heard, but this is for the historical record, dropped during the impeachment hearing. Bill Taylor told the House Intelligence Committee that a member of his staff overheard Trump mention, quote, the investigation to Sondland and that Sondland told President Trump that the Ukrainians were ready to move forward. 
Taylor called Trump's decision to withhold security assistance in exchange for help with investigations to benefit his personal interests both alarming and crazy because Ukraine is a strategic partner and supporting them is a, against Russian aggression is, quote, clearly in our national interest. Taylor also testified that, quote, Trump cares more about the investigations of Biden than Ukraine. There was a staffer who overheard all of this who will testify behind closed doors tomorrow as we're recording this. Um, and my understanding is that Sondland was called in today behind closed yeah. doors. Is that right? I, that was my uh, understanding. Maybe he's being given a chance to refresh his memory again. You know, <laughs> that memory, he, apparently his memory Were you lying the first time, the second time, or the third time? Yeah. <laughs> well, and the Washington Post reported uh, from Larry Piper, who's a former senior director of the White House Situation Room, the security ramifications are insane. <laughs> Using an open cell phone to communicate with the president of the United States yeah, uh, in a country that is so wired with Russian intelligence, you could almost take it to the bank that the Russians were listening in on the call. The, again, just the sheer absent-minded contempt for well, the anything. ambassador to the EU. Of course, the Russians were listening in were. on the call. Of course, they were. <sighs> the impromptu Sondland Trump conversation took place a day after an official call, July twenty-fifth, between Trump and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in which Trump had pressed for investigations, that famous phone yeah. call. Uh, it's so clear. I mean, not only that Sondland was not paying any attention to security, right. but now we we have definite connection. There, there's a second witness to the phone call that came out today. And uh, it's clear that Trump was personally involved. This is the thing you said last yeah. night about Nixon and B.B. Rebozo. Yeah. yeah, we can get you a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we, this is Trump, per, not just personally directing, but taking calls from an ambassador from a restaurant, which uh, according to everyone who's ever been on television, ever been involved, according to Aaron Sorkin, I mean, this shit mm -hmm. just never yeah. happens. Having an ambassador. You don't call the president of the United States ever. On his, on his unsecured, <laughs> the, 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 you call the president when World War Three breaks out, you don't call him to say, "Yeah, that that." No, and you call him through channels. Right. Then you call you call the the chief of staff and talk to him, he has, and he talks to the he president. He has a special yes. phone, but it's like, yeah, that crime right. we've talked about doing. Yeah, they're down with it. Yeah, I'm on it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, the crime we're gonna do. Definitely, don't worry. Because, Go to bed because I gave you a million dollars for your inaugural right. slush fund right. that went to your wife's friend. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Um, yep. In addition to doing crimes on the phone and establishing now an almost day by day timeline. Uh, George Kent testified mm -hmm. that Rudy Giuliani, let's not forget Rudy conducted a campaign to smear the U S ambassador to Ukraine by leading an effort to quote, gin up politically motivated investigations. So like you said, this is an employment trial. Now this is someone being, right, being right. bum rushed out of their job because Rudy Giuliani thinks she's standing in the way of the crimes, the high impeachable crimes that his boss is trying to commit. And uh, George Kemp mentioned Fox News by name under oath. Yeah. Saying, you know, this was going on all over Fox in the spring of 2019. Yeah. Trump attacked House Democrats on Twitter hours before the first public impeachment hearings were set to commence, complaining that Democrats have, quote, stacked the deck against him. Yeah. And accusing House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff of being a, quote, corrupt politician. Yeah. Shut up, old man. Um <laughs> John Dowd, who you might recall is the hog-faced former uh, personal lawyer for Donald Trump, referred to and Bill lover Taylor. of Comic Sans. Don't he, forget, he, he loves, writes his letters in Comic Sans. He loves Comic yeah. Sans. He really he, do, he does look like a Vogon. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> he really and does leave look that like there. a Vogon. He looks like a fucking Vogon. I'm just going to leave that there. Uh, he referred to the the unimpeachably credentialed public servant and hero bill taylor as quote a pitiful ignorant insubordinate gossip with no trustworthy information again just shut and the word insubordinate up. was what really got me yeah. yeah what you mean is not obedient to the dear leader not That's obedient to donald mean. trump yes. yep 81 percent of voters say there's little or no chance they'll change their minds about impeachment after the public hearings yep. 50 percent of voters support impeachment inquiry compared with 41 percent who oppose it. Yeah, you know who And they you don't are. dial down those numbers to 41% people that oppose it because they just want Donald Trump to quit tomorrow. Yeah, no. But, this, is, this is where we're at. Uh, Donald yeah. Trump considered firing the intelligence community's inspector general for doing their job, which is reporting the whistleblower's complaint to Congress after concluding it was credible. Fire the cops, fire the judges, 
fire the investigators. That's that's what you do when you're a criminal running a government. Yeah, innocent people don't do that. No, <laughs> no. According to an 18-page staff memo outlining their strategy, 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 House Republicans plan to argue that, quote, the president's state of mind, unquote, made it impossible for Trump to have committed an impeachable offense. Yeah during his July 25th call with the Ukrainian president Zelensky. Okay. I, I love this. He was too stupid and addled. You've seen him talk. You've seen him speak in public. You've seen he, he can't put a sentence together. He's an idiot. He couldn't be conducting The this. nuclear football? Yeah, sure, sure. He can have that. But, yeah, but okay. we're going to campaign for him. Roger Stone is now on trial, you might know. Uh, it was the first told one of Trump's top aides as early as spring of 2016 that WikiLeaks would release material that could damage Hillary Clinton and that the campaign view the materials as, quote, a gift. And I recall Roger Stone saying, making a joke at one point about having breakfast with Julian sure, Assange. you can't shut up about it. And, well, and that was because they were Skyping. They had to have been Skyping. So I want to see the Skype records on Roger Stone. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court heard arguments over whether the Trump administration can shut down DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program. Lower courts have ruled the administration's decision was, quote, arbitrary and capricious in violation of law. And there was quite a protest outside mm -hmm. the SCOTUS. Just want to remind everyone that as the impeachment goes on, as the crimes, the high crimes of Donald Trump, uh, just this vein of them, there's a whole plethora of them that we're not even talking about in the Mueller report. The sadism continues. This is not... The, the horror mm -hmm. that this people, this, right. pe these people are inflicting on us are not ending. The U.S. government has separated 69,550 migrant children from their parents over the past year, more than any other country, according to United Nations researchers. Admitting utterly that uh, the GOP tax scam was mm -hmm. a scam. Trump's economic advisors are now exploring a tax cut 2.0 for the middle class woven into that plan. Uh, that's just how they want right. to present it. Um, <laughs> what they really want to do is allow large investors to sell one stock and buy uh -huh. another and not pay capital gains on the sale of the first stock. <laughs> so this is really more tax scam and, uh, nonsense. And thank God we have a Democratic House yeah. of Representatives because this no. is not going to Well, And 41% of this country will vote for it. Um because the Trump administration doesn't vet anyone be beyond tits, ass, and pledges of undying loyalty to the dear leader, State Department official Mina Chang got away with lying on her resume, claiming, among many things, to be a Harvard Business School alumna who ran a nonprofit that worked in 40 countries, none of which is true. She even faked a Time magazine cover with her face on it. Yep, and they vetted her because she was hot and tall and leggy and... Thought Donald Trump was amazing. He's a man. And then... She was a senior yep. State Department official. No. Not George Soros either. She wasn't even no. vetted by Soros. She got around that somehow. <laughs> According to more than 900 previously private emails, which Trump senior policy advisor Stephen Miller sent to the editors of Breitbart from 2015 and 2016, Miller pushed story ideas about white nationalism, white genocide, xenophobic conspiracy theories, and eugenics era immigration laws. This story must not Jeez. die. We cannot let this drop. Now, this into is the stalking. Memory. I mean, I love you, darling, but I have never sent you 900 emails in a year, and and 900 <laughs> emails in a year, just like yeah. remember, remember what, wake up, white people. And this guy is the senior administration official in charge of immigration in this country. They're not. They're fucking not. And the, and just because we already knew right. who he was and the kind of person he was, now we have receipts, and he, needs to, he needs to go, and he needs to be eradicated from the from the Washington DC and from any seat of power and marked for life. Uh, I'm not talking about no. killing him or any <laughs> wishing him any harm physical harm but he needs to be out and of power he needs power to wear a today. red scarlet letter the rest of his life knowing that a uh, decent people yeah, yeah. should shun this scumbag and Ocasio Cortez has a you should go to her twitter she has a petition um she's trying to get other democratic congressmen and they are joining her in calling for his resignation two supporters of energy secretary rick perry secured an energy and gas contract from where ukraine after perry recommended uh, one to be zelensky's energy advisor because let's let's all feed off of that let's all belly up to the trough and get rich off of this terrified country either. sure no it's yeah. all about the oil you know 
Rachel Maddow's book. Uh, according to her new memoir, I want to run for president in 2024. <laughs> Why hasn't Liz Cheney come up with that book yet? Uh, former UN ambassador Nikki Haley claimed that two senior Trump advisors approached her about helping them save the country by yeah. undermining Trump. So she's yeah. she's tattling. Also, I don't know if you noticed today, Wolf Blitzer played a uh, tape of her when she was working for Rubio. Yeah. Well, and shitting on Trump. Well. And he said, what happened to that person? And she said, nothing. Nothing. She just gaslit her way right through that interview. The, this is everyone go out and look up the Beltway Iron Rule of David Brooks. Yep. Uh, acting White House Chief of Staff and head of OMB and just all around Hamburglar, Mick Mulvaney. <laughs> Refused to comply with a subpoena, uh, Mulvaney informed investigators literally one minute before his scheduled deposition that he would not appear, citing absolute super duper double secret immunity. I am only slightly exaggerating yeah. in how he characterized his level of immunity from any laws of man or God. Until four months ago, Fiona Hill was the White House's top expert on Russia and Europe. And this week during closed door testimony, she testified that there was a good chance Russia had compromising materials on Trump during the 2016 election. Yeah, and they still do. Yeah. Uh, and finally, uh, rumor has it that Trump didn't want Ukraine to have missiles because it would upset Vladimir Putin. Yep. And that came out of Mick Mulvaney's mouth. Yep. Yeah. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Pikachu, just like the Pokemon character. He is adorable, and you should go visit him at our Facebook page and website, and of course, Pikachu loves the taste of freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your pet will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. I've got a little cat in here who I think can overhear you. And it's like, <laughs> cool, let's go. What? Let's, what? We got to eat. We got to eat. <laughs> don't bite my toes again you can visit pikachu at our facebook page or website and you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address proleftpodcast at gmail.com where you can also write to both of us uh we're getting a little short on internet kitties it's time to send them in if you if you sent one and i haven't allowed your kitty or other pet to ascend to the internet throne yet we never say wait list to an internet kitty no, uh, no, it just makes me mad. That's my oversight. Send it again, proleftpodcast at gmail.com. Put Internet Kitty in the subject line of the email, and we will make sure that your kitty or other pet has a chance to ascend to the throne of Internet Kittydom. Don't forget, you can also write to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love for you guys. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties would like to know if Bill Taylor is available to do voiceover work for their gritty reboot of Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. You could do the gritty reboot. I could, but I'm not Bill Taylor. Let's think about living... Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.